Hello. Patricia O'Connor and Frida Reba Darcy here. We got our boots kicked off and we're uh, starting to get a little a few things done here on Friday afternoon. These are the boards that I ordered. I didn't want to haul long pieces of wood with my car. So I um, had them drop ship something that would be small enough to ship. And as you can see, I've started nailing up these little guys across here. And that is how that'll look. This isn't gonna be the, uh, this isn't gonna be the Brooklyn Bridge, mind you. It's just gonna provide us a little trough that we can put our 18 inches of foil in, run it down here, run it across here, up there, down there, and then maybe tag it, tack it down somewhat. But I've also, um, I've just put one nail in each end, and this is our little look-see. We're at the stage of the game where nothing is really too permanent, and uh, as you can see, I've run out of room there. This is our biggest pot, I think, for the top of the rail. Yeah, this is, this will be, I believe, our biggest, our biggest pot that lives up here on this part of the rail. And I believe I need to pull these off and put a slight spacer behind them. If I were to, um, put something that's a quarter of an inch thick underneath those nails and then nail them back. Uh, that would give me the space I need to not be pressing up again. See, because this is gonna be covered with that, with that five mil copper and it's already, it is already resting up against the pots. So it's late. Friday afternoon, people have already been out enjoying the pool and will probably be back after dinner. So I'm not gonna go making any more no noise or banging any more hammers today. But what I'm thinking I'm gonna do is pull all of these off and add a quarter inch spacer underneath them. And it could be anything. It could literally be a piece of that wood uh cut into enough pieces to uh add a shim underneath every one of those to bring it out that far for instance or it could be anything else i mean literally it could be um a bottle cap that's a quarter inch thick nailed underneath every one of those boom and that would be done so that's where we are there i'm probably gonna uh, actually roll out copper. I'll make a decision on what to do on that and I'll need to go to the hardware store tomorrow and pick up and pick up the uh, piece of the piece of wood that'll go along the back side there which I had discussed on and that'll complete the back side so that uh, so that I'm not bending the the, uh, the copper foil up into nothing on the back side. There needs to be a lip there for that to lean into and help me make a good straight a good straight edge. Now, um, in the last couple of weeks, since probably, this is, a, oh well, actually I would say a month now, uh, the end of July, everybody looked absolutely awesome. We were running on all cylinders, as I would say. But after that, I started complaining about what I thought was either um, powdery mildew, or spider mites and, the, and then later i included into my worry i went i don't see the spider uh, mite webs that i'm normally looking at i did see a little bit of um i did see one spider web but that didn't really look like that it looked like to me like some poor leaf hopper got accused of doing bad things and probably got sent packing when it was the only one around here that was actually working so sorry about that uh, if I didn't kill you, you're free to come on back, little leaf hopper. But anyway, what we had was scale. That is a, um, whereas I was going, maybe I over fertilized, maybe I over watered, maybe it's powdery mildew, 
Maybe it's spider mites who don't seem to leave spider mites. No, I didn't really know that much about how scale affects bonsai trees because uh, the last time I grew bonsai trees was in Southeast Texas. And I guess I just didn't have that particular predator to uh, put up with. But like I was saying a couple of days ago, I was showing you all of this new growth and I went, and it will flush all of this stuff out very, very quickly. And in a couple of days, I'll be picking it all off because it'll be dead. This never left. I mean, I can, my eyesight, I'm 60 odd, 62. So that would be 60 even, I guess. Um, and I can see things, you know, I've got reading glasses and I can see things as small as um, grains of pepper. And if they move, I know to kill them. Um, but all I see is damage. You know, there was never really anything to see here. And so I had to, um, I had to uh, do some pretty extensive research and what all of these things had in common was scale. Scale does damage like that. Scale does damage. Where are you at, Pat? Find your freaking big ass hand. Scale does damage like that. And scale does all that, that black stuff. I cut that back two days ago and it died back to there by the next day. So what we've been doing is what else we've discovered is, is that um, the whole time I was going, well, I'm going to make sure the tree dries out good in between waterings. That way, if it were me over watering, that'll take care of that shot. Uh, then, uh, when I do water, I'm going to uh, let water run all the way through the pot, like like when it, like you uh, sometimes do when you put your bonsai trees in the sink or the bathtub and just let it run all the way through. That way, if there were uh, a matter of overfeeding, we would have covered that. And in the meantime, I uh, kept up with my neem and just continued to watch the problem get worse. And the whole time, the tree is prolifically putting out more and more. It's actually inspirational, the amount of, the amount of energy and fight back this guy has is um is is phenomenal and inspiring if we get through this now having identified the problem um i've got another problem that um, i'm still overcoming a little learning curve over so what i've been doing is i think the best treatment for my particular type of problem would be this guy and except this is for uh, roses, flowers, and shrubs. This is for like potted plants. And what you're going to do on that is, I guess, spray the base. And then you would uh, spray the foliage. So that's what I've been doing. But I've seen other people who have landscaping pine trees and whatnot. And they'll buy the liquid concentrate. The problem, and it says that's for trees. Well, these are trees. So is the reason that I'm applying my stuff to my foliage and to my soil and it's still fighting back is because I don't have the, uh, the tree stuff. I have the, I have the bush and the bush and, and rose and garden stuff. Could be, uh, but I've been applying it uh, two or three times a week at least and uh, I've slowed it down on the worst tree and so far I haven't stopped it. It might be that it takes a couple of days once we're in this stage to work its way in. So uh, in the amount of energy that the tree is pushing out, I'm still not, uh, I feel really good that I figured out what, was, what it finally was uh, without having to do an autopsy, i.e. they were already dead. Um, you know, not only are we fighting it, but we we know what we're fighting. It's, uh, I've identified our little hiccup and I'm passing it all along for, um, for you guys. Maybe like me, you've got experience growing other things. So 
you know when to worry, but maybe you haven't seen it all before as it pertains to bonsai trees. You know, maybe you were into succulents last time, or maybe uh, you were into carnivorous plants or orchids or something. I actually, I went through all of those stages probably before I was 15. Um, but, so what I've been doing is ordering that stuff and then spraying, spraying the soil with it, spraying the tops and the bottoms of the leaves, and spraying the top of the soil, and then watering that stuff in. And I do have the concentrate on its way, and I'm going to talk to, uh, I'm gonna find some people who are have been there and done this before and see if that's the right stuff or, or not to use. Meanwhile, I wanted to get the stuff coming here in case I ended up waiting on it. I didn't want to have to wait long. But, you know, it's like when it comes to the concentrate, they tell you to measure four feet up your tree and then add one ounce of this treatment for every inch of trunk. And then they say, note, if you have uh, over a 50 inch trunk, you're gonna need to mix two gallons and then pour it at the base. Well, these are trees, so would I go with the tree treatment? and then maybe just put one ounce because it's not gonna be like it's, you know, there's not four feet high. There's um, four feet of trunk on its best day at its best part. And then, uh, so anyway, I'm gonna get some, I'm gonna get some information on uh, what's enough and what's not too much. And I'm gonna try to coordinate that information with what I've already done because I don't see what I've already done um, completely putting the brakes on any of this yet. Although I do think I've got the right, um, I do think I've got the right product for the job. I don't think Neem would have ever done this. I think Neem was my go-to for years and um, live and learn. This is a different deal than what I'm used to. And uh, I'll know next time you know, right? So, uh, sometimes we have to learn our lessons, you know, through our mistakes. You do, you learn a lot from your mistakes. And sometimes we can actually learn our lessons from other people's mistakes. So hopefully, well, how, how do you keep getting your hair? And I mean, I'm not one, I'm not losing my hair. And two, I keep finding it in there. Like, how do you do that, Pat? Um, anyway, that's what's going on there, and that's what's going on there. I'll probably pull this guy and this guy off. It'll take me 10 minutes to pull those off once I've decided. Maybe a cork would maybe make sense or something. I could measure some little something and cut it off in sections and buy a quarter of an inch back there so I'm not pressing up against my pot. Like, that is actually, that is actually squeezed in there a little bit, and the, uh, and the copper foil is not on there yet. Um, while well, we're bitching about stuff, this guy is actually looking better. It's stuff that is leafing out. Um, doesn't seem to be as affected and it is just going nut everywhere. So I'm pretty tickled about that. Um, so yeah, that's what's going on. That's what's going on with that guy. That's what's going on there with my um, my little baby bougainvillea in the yellow crackle pot. Um, and that's what's going on with mama bougainvillea. And that's what's going on with um, baby ponderosa yamadori. And let's back up and get a money shot of this, uh, of this Ponderosa Yamadori, big, big one there. That tree is so pretty. They're all so pretty. Even my trees, even my trees in making, I get, I get so much, so much pleasure bringing these guys along and, um, for the most part, I've stayed with one rule. Try to grow things that are known to grow well. 
um, where you live. Don't try to don't try to overreach. And for the most part, all of these trees, uh, even with with our little bit of problems and stuff, they always come from a place of pretty good health because they're not um, because in between time we're um, enjoying life here in California. The exception to that is is I was given a heads up after I'd already fallen in love with this ponderosa pine that global warming causes these guys to not like the winters here. I don't think I've been told that it may not find our winter cold enough. So I'm going to do some more research on that. I don't want to do anything to either one of those two little beauties that would, um, you know, the story was, yeah, they can live there for a year or two, and then uh, the lack of the lack of uh, the winters that they're used to finally finally takes them out. So I um, might be looking at um, what I have to do if I have to move them, if I have to move them for the winter um, every year, every other year, if I have to. Um, make a different condition for them or do something like that or if somebody's got a coal box and I need to learn about that. It's just something else that I've got to look into, see whether or not that's something that I should be worried about. And If it is something I need to be worried about, then you can bet um, I'll be, uh, Pat will be all wide-eyed about it. And um, our little cypress is, uh, is looking pretty and doing pretty good. And uh, our other little black pine is uh, is doing all kind of good stuff. I'm just really happy with this. I've got a black pine in every stage. I've got a two-year-old black pine. I've got a uh, probably uh, eight-year-old black pine. I've got a 17-year-old black pine that's already there. And I've got an older black pine that's already there. The story on this guy is 75 years. I'm not that old, so I wasn't there. Um, but yeah, I mean, you can look in there and see all of that. Um, all of that bark. It's just so thick, huh? And that just looks like, it looks like lava rock or something. Anyway, that's where we are here. Scale, huh? Scale. So, um, the times before when I had seen scale, it was on orchids, and it looked like little tiny seashells almost. This didn't look like anything. It looked like death on a leaf. And uh, so that's why I was kind of thinking, well, it's something that I don't see typically like spider mites. I just see their webs. So anyway, uh, some of y'all probably saw that. I mean, we're uh, 215 strong as of today. So I figure out of those 200 people, some of y'all were probably going, oh my God, Patricia, Sherlock, Pat, come on. Figure it out, Pat, fail out. But anyway, live and learn. We know what, uh, we know what we're up against and we, think we know what we're doing and if we don't we're either um, got our white stick and kind of shuffling off in the right direction so um, yeah and uh, the skies here are pretty nice we're surrounded by the California fires uh, New Orleans is flooded New York got flooded so um, be thankful. Be thankful for your space and your zen. And be thankful that um, that you have a life where you can um, take time for hobbies and things that don't mean life and death necessarily. I mean, I get really upset about these trees. But um, there's news out there for some people that's not really that good. And a little tree truffles doesn't sound like so much against all that. Um, anyway, I'm glad. I'm glad I have my life. I'm glad I have little Frida. And I'm glad I have you guys. 
and uh, thanks for watching and like and subscribe.